Okie dokie. All right. I'll take it away. Take it away. Bake it away, toys. Away. Take me away. We actually can't can't sing this. This is actually copyright infringement. Sacred place. Take me away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mock Stars Podcast. I'm your host, Evan Kuna, and I'm here with my two great friends, my two best friends, Jordan Garcia. Yo, you sound like Bonesaw from Spider-Man. And Christopher Ritter. Does not feel good in the cans. I've got you for three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I hope none of, none of you listening has to listen to this intro. Today, we're talking about a lot. Oh, there it is. Because a lot has happened. It's been a busy ass week for magic spoilers. It like it just stacked up on us. It and feels it, like two weeks. To I be think. honest, I, I'm so far behind. I I feel like we can't accomplish everything today. So we might yeah, have to cards were spoiled for you moments before this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're like we're still catching up. We're catching missing cards or catching cards that we missed like a week ago, you know, where there's a ton of shit came out. Yep, and we're finally, finally prepared for what is going to be one of the crazier sets in uh, recent history. I think that this has all been ramping up. We've all been ramping up uh, Phyrexia all the way won. We thought the hype on that was crazy. And so like now you see this with uh, March of the Machine, you're just like, what is going on? Ten whole- times the hype. Yeah, the set is just like gas, 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 gas. It, like, what if we just stacked every great piece that we've been thinking about for the past two years in one set? It'll all balance itself out. So... Uh, we're here talking about it. If you want to support the show, be sure to look down in the description below. We have links uh, for our Instagram. That's a great place to follow us. Jordan is on top of it. He's a lot of content lately. Trying yeah, my best. Yeah, trying my best. Been great. Thanks, yeah. boys. Uh, you can follow us on uh, pretty much every podcast platform there is. And most of all, you can follow us on YouTube. Subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and hit that little bell for more notifications as we drop content uh every friday we have an episode every single friday and more stuff to come yeah i'm working on getting that video camera hell yeah get some new videos up yep we'll be doing a little bit of live streaming talking about deck techs and maybe even just talking and working through the deck building process oh that's so, fun yeah we're uh we're sort of like taking requests so if you guys have any suggestions for you know like you want to see us build a certain commander deck put it down in the comments below and uh, we'll put it on our radar and hopefully have a video out for you soon that being said let's talk about battles because we did not know what battles were coming into this recording like or really honestly into this week we had no idea what they were you could just speculate and all of a sudden we have 30 of them that's what i'm saying i feel like a month has gone by because now it's like you have so many battles to read through in both sides of the card and we're still figuring out how the mechanics of everything works it, this was such an interesting spoiler season because usually i feel like you get a break to digest things and this was like once it happened it just kept happening and it was just this, this snowball effect uh, and that kind of was what the whole freaking week felt like. It was just like a tidal wave of new spoilers. But it's been a pretty exciting week. Yeah, it's uh, it's big in the way that like Mark Rosewater has been talking about how the game is going to change f- fundamentally or change forever after, you know, March of the Machine and March of the Machine Aftermath. And I think we're just starting to see the the beginning of that with Battle. It is the first card type in over 16 years. What was the last new one? Planeswalker? Planeswalker. Ah. Jeez. Yeah, so we're looking at just... War of the Battles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're looking at something that could potentially be, uh, you know, it, it is an evergreen. It's going to be in every set moving forward, so there's always new things to look at. We're going to have new cards in the future that care about these more or less you know so we're different types of battles as well right now they're all sieges yeah so i'm guessing there's some subtyping that might come up in the future be very relevant it's like we already you already have your brain stacked like with all of this information in the game and how like all the mechanics fluidly work target non-land permanent you know that now has greater meaning you know uh destroy target artifact or enchantment do you do you wait for the battle to flip and then target the thing 
like we're seeing that battles can flip into multiple different things where you're not seeing that it can flip into a planeswalker yet or do we No, it can the yeah there's teferi does yeah, do that yep. teferi does do that so it's literally they've done all the different types on the back yeah so now there's a new card type that can transform into pretty much every single card type that there is i like that they're making the game more complicated i that love is, that yeah it's good for new newer players let's shout that out first and <laughs> yeah. foremost significantly more complicated yeah uh, the best part is is when you're at pre-release the first time for this for this new card and this new mechanic you're going to know exactly what's in your opponent's hand because they're going to turn the card sideways when they're reading it you know, they're going to draw the card and they're going to be like, oh, what the fuck is this? Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I cannot wait, you know, to be playing a four player game of Commander and the attack phase, assuming there's only one attack phase, first of all. For now. Uh, and you're only keeping track of like actual cardboard on the table. Uh, you can have creatures attacking all four opponents. Some of those creatures are attacking the opponents to their face. Some to some, some to some planeswalkers, and some to some battles. Now, the thing about those battles, those battles, the people assigned to defend the battles don't have control of the permanent, I believe. Correct. So you're attacking uh, a permanent that is controlled by one player on the battlefield of another player in the middle of all of this. It's going to be a fucking shit show. It's yes. Very complex. I, a lot of layers. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry about my language, by the way. Oh, whoa. Oh, what? No, oh, no, no. fucking oh, dare you. Yeah, yeah. really. Everything's going to shit. Blast yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about these. They are, I, in my brain, I just keep reading them as enchantments, and I, and that is obviously not the case. Well, they behave like that. They... For do all intents and purposes, do they? They, uh, I, I, but they sit on the battlefield. They have, an, they have an ETB effect, and then they turn over and do something else. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they, so they behave kind of like spells that linger but they're on permanent based spells. Yeah. yeah. So you have to target an opponent for one of these, and you have to swing at these. Other opponents can also swing at these, but mm-hmm, there seems they? to be no benefit for them to do such a thing. Spite. <laughs> For, yeah, it's politics. not like they get it. It's not like a coveted pr- uh, prize kind of thing. Nope. Coveted jewel vibe. It's literally just helping the other person well, achieve I mean, some their of the, goal. Some of the flip effects, aren't they like uh, global effects? Yeah, yeah. There are some so, that are like board wipey. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it could be desirable to Help do that. Help me get to this board wipe kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, or, they, just, or just politics. Being like, hey, I'll get you this uh, mana dork on the other side mm-hmm. of this battle if you don't attack me for a turn. Yeah, literally everyone's going to know what the information is on the back. I think as soon as it comes down, yeah. that that information has to be public. Like, they have to know. Yeah. So, yeah, there is the situation where it's like, hey, it flips over, it deals three damage to each creature. I need that right now, so I will attack it. Um, you know, so as the player playing it, you have to realize, uh, maybe I don't want this out there because it might just turn, turn around and bite me. Mm-hmm. I don't, see why I, I yeah there's still a point outside of that argument of like hey this is a global effect i don't see why you would attack a, another thing unless a player is presenting a win con and if it gets to their turn they win so you're like hey if that flips does it like give you a card draw does it give you something that can like yeah i mean there's yeah. reasons there's political <clears throat> reasons to do it right so yeah. in commander and also maybe i have to you know what there may also it may be like a harmless way to get an attack trigger, um, if you don't want to actually deal damage to face or something like that mm-hmm. in in a situation which is also political. But like there there's reasons to do it. Right. I guess it, being presented with that option, the new Elishnorn from the set says that you know uh, if a source you don't control or a source would deal damage to you, you know deal, they lose two life unless they pay one. Right. Like they have the Elishnorn on the battlefield. You put a battle out. It's like y'all just swing at the battle. You know. It's like that. That way I can ignore this Elishnorn for a minute and mm-hmm. find a way to deal with it. Uh, it adds a new layer of complexity and there have been examples across many other card games. Like I think in Yu-Gi-Oh they tried to implement new pieces to the board that ultimately destroyed the game. And I don't see this totally doing that. We could see, but it just seems like it's more effort to get an effect that we can already uh, circumnavigate with, it, with the most powerful cards in the game. Yeah, there's I don't know, there's kind of like a Three Stooges effect like when they all try to get through the door together at the same time you can't <laughs> right. do it because there's so many things being jammed through the door like magic is already complex enough that any new level of complexity you add to it doesn't distort the balance 
like you you know it's hard to create a new mechanic that would distort the balance of the game at this stage they didn't put any stacks pieces on mm-hmm. these battles all these battles like do something when they enter the battlefield and they don't hinder the speed of the game once you create a battle that hinders the speed of the game that's when it becomes more of a like less of a political thing and more of like oh i'm i am now a target like mm. kill that battle get that thing off the battlefield it, uh, it, it's a design space that I feel like Wizards has had success with uh, in the past few years, like with the dungeon and initiative and monarch. It's like an optional thing that you don't necessarily need to opt into uh, in a four player format um, for sure to, you know, it, it's there, though. It exists, you know, right. that's what I was going to call out as well is like this kind of feels like. A mini game to me, much like initiative with thinking going in the dungeon, you know, and mm-hmm. like that. It's more like you're day, tracking day and night, you know, it's the individual player is like this is what they care about, but the table in a four player game that is doesn't really care necessarily yeah. about what they're doing. I gotta tell you guys, when you guys are flipping day and night for what pieces or whatever, Averbrook caretaker is the only yeah, relevant. Yeah, thing you guys I play a couple ever. pieces that care about it. I yeah. do not pay attention. Exactly at all. right. No, nope. nor nope. would you with like if I was venturing into dungeons and shit like that. And like, had this been whoever f- does the final blow to it gets the effect. Like that creates a new playscape for everybody to mm-hmm. participate. Yeah. But if it's just you obviously won't swing at that because you don't want them to get the value off the spells they're casting. It's not like Fortnite or whatever and like just a hot weapon just dropped on the battlefield and everyone swarms after it. Right, like, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um so because of that, it just feels like I said, like just like a side little mini game. Are you a creature focused deck that you happen to be able to swing four, you know, damage across the board? Mm-hmm. Great. You'll be able to take advantage of both sides of this card. Yeah. But like pretty much that currently feels like the extent of it to me. I don't see how it's going to do, like Evan said, anything better than what we're already doing. And so it's just, you're going to have these weird niche build around decks that are playing battle. You're playing, your your commander plays dungeons, whatever. I, I mean, I'm sure there's a, one of these cards that is going to be in a design space that where it's overlooked that because there's not enough spells that target that are able to hit this type of permanent that it's exploitable totally something like that that was like very outside point. of that i you know it's it's not gonna disrupt the uh the state of the game i totally agree but there we're also going to the point now where like more and more and more we're seeing non-land permanent in, on our removal and mm-hmm. less of like you know artifact and enchantment so had this been three or four years ago that battle came out sure yeah there's these won't be touched for the most part but if you're putting six mana into this one I'm looking at right now for Invasion of Fiora, ETB, choose one or both, destroy all legendary or non-legendary creatures. That's a six mana board wipe, which is pretty sick. But if you're just banking on that and not getting any of that backside, that Marchesa Resolute Monarch, like you just lost half the value of your card, I feel. Yeah, this is, I mean, most notably, uh, these battles enter the battle. Like they enter the battlefield and so there's triggers to happen there. I, yeah, it's like, yes, it's also a non-creature spell, right? So there, it could have relevance there in uh, the metagame down the line. I just, I I really am confused what the future of this looks like. And I think it'll be cleared up once they create another subtype for it. And then they also create more cards that interact with these. And yeah, payoffs and stuff like yeah, that. Exactly. You know, I will say like on... You know, play the devil's advocate because I'm not a huge fan of these. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like Dockside Extortionist, something that has just become such like a glutton in the format just because of how many artifacts and enchantments we have to play. Um, you know, maybe because we start introducing new types, that starts to get around effects like that and other things that also mm-hmm. benefit. I, I mean, for sure, there's going to be a battle subtype of like dual. That is some going to be some sort of fight effect, and that's going to give you some sort of ability. There's like I, I don't know. There's a lot of exciting design space left yeah. here that where I think we're going to see some cool stuff coming out of it. Yeah, they didn't I mean, have anything flip into an equipment yet, did they? Uh, I don't think I've seen so far. I don't think so. You know, I think that's a really cool design space. I think they could do some something with that. Uh, I guess. On, on a note with like the enter the battlefield effect, this does make mother of the Ma- mother of the machines much stronger. Totally, oh, hell yeah, you know because it stops battles completely. as well as new Atraxa. Yeah, yeah. So completely stops battles. Uh, yeah, and the Atraxa gets to like put that in her hand. That text is now relevant. Um, I think 
God, it's just crazy. Like Invasion of Kaldheim, if you're like playing Mother Machines, if you're playing Boros in any significant way, uh, you get to just exile all the cards from your hand, draw that many cards twice. You get mm -hmm. two triggers off of it. And I uh, I, I want to play that deck. You know, I want to play the deck that has mom plus battles. Maybe there's like a Yark battles deck in the future that's kind of funny or something like that. Oh, yeah. you yeah. have seen Yark land whenever, all a thousand times. Yeah, whenever a permanent enters, you know, double the trigger is always great. Uh, it, it Any Harmonicon abilities that are going to, like, uh, trigger these an additional time, awesome. There's a... You... The seal... This, like... There is no ceiling here yet. You know, like we've we've seen that they're trying to play it safe a little bit with some of this stuff. They're they're pretty good though. Out they of are good. Yeah, like right. Costing is gate. good. It's sort of like a values you know, there. You know, the last time they introduced a new permanent type, which I learned today, was Planeswalkers in Lorwyn, mm -hmm. right? Pretty pretty balanced at that time too. Like, I mean, besides Jace the Mind Sculptor, that's <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, they were they were heavily played. Like the Planeswalkers are heavily played because nobody knew really how to deal with them yet. Even though the rule and the way the legend rule worked as well, right? Yeah, pivoting yeah. pivoting from a four player concept to a two player concept, I changed my tune a little bit here. I think battles are going to be significantly better in a one v one scenario. It, oh, for sure. Yeah, you're playing tons of the creatures, your loader ground strategies, and all of a sudden now you have uh, essentially two cards on one with this value pieces, and you're, you know, as long as you can get through, theoretically, always going to be flipping it. Um, and I think that'll, I don't know, I think that'll be an interesting way to, you know, kind of buff, like especially in draft and anything like that. Draft for sure. It's going to be interesting, inter uh, interesting to see if it has a place in any, like, eternal formats. Totally. And I think yeah. you're right. Like, there's something that's going to be a little sleeper guy, and all of a sudden you see it at one CEDH tournament, and they're like, wow, that's actually crazy good, you know? And it'll just take yeah. a little time for that to, for the dust to settle. Remember that Underworld Breach was chaff when it was first printed? And it was $7 forever. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, yeah, just now, that went up. Yeah, it's now it's at least twenty dollars anywhere you look, and I will say that you know even shifting from one to one, uh, Jordan and I are going to do a two headed giant uh, with mm -hmm. this draft. Two v two looks insane. <laughs> two battles, bro, because you can put the shit. battles out and both players can attack it. Yeah, and then the opposing team has to be able to block for it. But here's the thing: is that its target opponent. So you can choose one opponent, and then the other, you're, even though they're the same technically player, the other mm -hmm. opponent can't block for it. So that one player has to be able to block for it. Mm -hmm. I need so. to look at these rules before I go play two yeah. a giant. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Oh, man. It, it can get real uh, complicated and stuff. Uh, I remember for the Star Wars collectible card game uh, from Decipher, I think with the Dagobah set, or the Cloud City set, they invented something kind of similar to Battles where it really just benefited one player to do it and it was a bunch of hoops to jump through and you got something cool out of it if you did it. Like, basically, like, you know, there was one where if you if Luke went through his Jedi training process, you know, he just becomes like a super soldier and just like <laughs> you win the game at that right. point. Uh, you know, it's going to be fun to see in different formats, like you're saying, Two-Headed Giant, like how stuff like that plays out. Because I think in, you know, slower things that are less competitive, definitely a ton of fun to be had here. Totally. Yeah, if we're dialing yeah. back for a little bit from the competitive talk, either CDH or mm -hmm. 1v1, like if we're just talking casual commander, totally yeah. agree. This or, is going to be a lot of nonsense. Or like a World War format of like variant of commander where like everyone is trying to play as many battles as possible in their deck and just like Love it's it. just like a super complicated comp at step <laughs> every turn you and we're know? putting together oathbreaker decks right now you know maybe we see oathbreaker battles or something coming up here who yeah, knows there isn't a uh sarah's sanctum for battles yet and once that card is created that's when i think yeah. that's when people are like oh megan attracts a all battles deck that never die because they get counters so you can just <laughs> never kill your battles yeah you never, never kill them. your battles yeah yeah I did, I did want to throw out because I was wondering what we call these before, kind of the quote unquote health for these battles. They're called defense counters. Defense counters, not I shield counters. That. Yes, you, that. correct. So you attack them and you remove defense counters on them. Mm. I think I'm just getting old because I just started hating everything that's new. I know. I'm the I same know. way, bro. But like, <laughs> but like when in magic, have you ever used a creature's power to swing at a permanent to remove counters from it? No. Uh, planeswalkers. All right, fair enough. Hey. Sure. Yep. Got, yep. Yeah. Gotcha. So this is just so Eat different. Shit, because Jordan. You control the permit. Exactly. And that's the thing is like, it's just so confusing. And I think Ritter riffed on it a little bit. It's just like, enters the battlefield. You have to defend it. 
I'm going to attack it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, but I still control it. It's almost like that uh, Raging River or the Jace that was in the Unfinity set recently, where it's just like creating uh, complicated lines of play. Yeah. Or, or like yeah. when I go to Vegas, like you can play like 27 lines on some of these slot machines. And I have no idea like what's happening with those payoffs. Increase your chances to win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I pretty much until I see it played more, I, I think I'm chilling on it. Yeah, I oh, I'm excited for it. Uh, Some of these are fun are going to be fun to play around with. Right. Uh, let's see. Now but, that we've talked extensively about battles, and you guys are probably tired of hearing about it, because honestly, I'm tired of talking about it. I just want to see what they do. Evan, like, pick your battles. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she. Got to pick your battles. Uh, let's move on to the set. There's a lot going on. We got mixed reviews on our set review, so we're not really, we're not really aiming to do a set review this time around. You guys let us know in the comments below, reach out to us in any way possible through any social media platform to tell us any different, and we will do a set review for this set. But until then, we're just going to talk about the spiciest things we see, the things that we're interested in. And just kind of go that direction. Can I start? Yeah, dude. Hit it, take it. Take it away. I want to start because I'm answering a question you asked not five minutes ago. Woo. They do have a battle that turns into equipment. It is invasion of New Capenna for a single white and a black. It's a battle siege battle. Just so you know. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, enters the battlefield. You may sacrifice an artifact or creature when you do exile target artifact or creature in employment. In op- an opponent controls. Noise. Um, okay, not too bad. Flip that. How many counters on it? Great question. Four defense counters on it. Okay, okay. Uh, once you remove all four defense counters via combat, you can flip it and get the Holy Frazzle Cannon. It looks sick. It's essentially a Tommy gun shooting lightning. Uh, it says whenever a creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature and each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. With equip mana or equip cost of one mana. I am so lost right now. Can you repeat that one more time? The the equipment? Yeah. Whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and each other creature you control that shares a type with it. What colors Whoa. is this battle in? It is a white and a black. Two mana. And one to equip. So I it's mean ain't, quite the efficient. Yeah. Whoa. There's some decent tribes in there too mm-hmm. where that's relevant. Yeah, so two mana ETB, you sack an artifact or creature, and you can exile an artifact or creature. It's a great ability. Yep, yep. yep. And then just a sick-ass freaking equipment on the back. Love it. Yeah. And, like, you know, the other thing we haven't talked about yet is uh, the other mechanic coming up in this set, Mm -hmm. and that is Incubate. Uh, We're getting these little tokens with counters on them that now become creatures, so I can only imagine... With this card, the Holy Frazzle Cannon, they all share a creature type. Right, they do. They're all Phyrexian. They uh, are artifact creatures too, right? They are. Yes, they yeah, are. once they come to life, yeah. they're because they're not Phyrexian before they are a creature. Once they're when they're an artifact, they're not Phyrexian. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, uh, a little secret here is that I don't think that these tokens are really going to do anything. You're not going to have to re- worry about transform tokens in like an EDH situation. But uh, the fact that they are artifacts is super relevant to a lot of strategies totally and there's a lot of cards that drop them incidentally i think in 1v1 they're going to be crazy like we how we saw mites i think we're going to see kind of a similar vibe here Mm -hmm. um but maybe even more because of how much their power can scale um but i do agree it's going to be they have fractal vibes in that way they do they do for sure um notably what i found out was you pay two once you don't have to pay two every time to make him a creature like i was thinking it just you got to do the two one time and so uh it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to always be, you know, maximizing your mana efficiency, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, this other one I wanted to talk about is so spicy. I love me some red blue nonsense in uh, 1v1, and I love me some prowess in 1v1. And there's a really good new prowess. Creature. I fucking love this card. Dude, okay, it's yeah. sick. And also, I want to bring it up because it is also a cycle of cards that we have right now that are very cool. So, this one is Kenra Spell Spear, one in a red for a jackal warrior. It's a 2 2. It, and these are all uncommon, by the way, which is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy for an uncommon. Listen, this should definitely be a rare. Yeah, listen to this for an uncommon, bro. It is a 2-2 two, two for 2, Trample and Prowess, right? Already solid. Then you pay 3 in a Phyrexian blue mana, so you can pay just 3 and 2 life. Uh, and you will transform it at sorcery speed f- into Gitaxian Spellstalker. It is a 3-3 three, three with Trample, Ward 2, and 2 instances of Prowess. 
Yeah. <laughs> which triggers separately. <laughs> uh, that's actually insane. I am. Yeah, I, I read this and I, I just did not believe it for a second because I was like, why? Because it you don't have to play blue in this. This is just power and there's a great mono red card yes exactly it like mono red is already you oh, it's if, so good already bro so if you guys are fans of any other content creators if you haven't heard of cgb covert go blue go watch him he does a lot of like playing on arena and he climbs the ladder and he always does these ranked like ranked games he will play against mono red for hours hours on end at the highest level of arena and this just bolsters that like completely like I, I think that you don't need to play blue because it's a phyrexian blue in order to flip it so you pay the three you flip it you cast a lightning bolt you swing with what what is it a three three on the back so you get the a five three, five three. yep with flying or does that flying or just Tram trample, trample ward two yeah i, I just it just gets so insane. It gets, it the gets out of hand very quickly. Yeah, I know that Mono Red wants to like end the game quickly, but this allows it to mid game a little bit better where you can put something out and sit on it, sit on it, sit on it. You can sit on some instants so that when your opponents play things that are like destroy creatures with power two or less, like uh, what is it? Uh, Gix's Command. Yeah. With Mono Black really wants to like uh, wipe the board of the, the tiny things like Phoenix Chick. So this gets around that. Um, keeps your curve super low but it gives you something to use your mana on at exactly. the four mana slot if you wanted to there's too many times where the mono red deck will gas out and it will sit there and it will dawdle because it can't keep a permanent on the battlefield this some this says this can stick like if you get there it will stick and that's why i i fucking love it i i saw it and i was just like thank you i love that we're returning to amonkhet in some way yeah no that was super high and yeah this is a whole cycle of a um of one, a single color card on the front side with a opposite or a different colored Phyrexian activation to flip it over into something else. Mm -hmm. Man, there's so much going on. You know, like I knew when we came into this episode, we were going to uh, sit and talk about all the spicy things from this set, but we're not going to be able to get to half. No. Of them. Yeah. It feels like we're going to be able to talk about maybe 10 cards and we're going to be hitting our limit here. Just, on mental capacity alone yeah because ritter brought this one to my attention there is a uh infinite loop with alter dementia and a new card Kroxa and kunaros counts as one of my picks exactly. <laughs> yeah well i figured you'd take over from here sorry yeah three and a mardu so three red white and a black for an elder giant dog it is a 6-6 six, six Vigilant Which is, Menace. It's a very sick life. creature type, I yeah. gotta say. Yes. What is it? Elder Giant Dog? Let's Elder go. Elder Giant Dog. <laughs> Whenever Kroxa and Kunaros enter the battlefield or attacks, you may exile five cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Ritter, tell me why that's good. Wait, I gotta read the flavor text. When the invasion tree reached the underworld, it found only teeth and fury. <laughs> so rad. I love it's that. It's metal as hell. <laughs> All right. Go it's for good because it. it's metal as hell. Um, but then also uh, because it's a responsive trigger, uh, the way it stacks is that you can just go infinite with Altar of Dementia. Yeah. So the ETB goes on the stack. You sacrifice it to Dementia. Mill six. Resolve the ETB trigger of exiling five cards and returning this card back to the great, uh, battlefield. Yeah, it, yeah, just got to make sure you don't, you know, exile your combo pieces, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, yeah, you're gonna have a pretty big, like, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a pretty big selection here. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. just having like low key a six mana reanimate in the command zone doesn't seem that bad to me. I think when you look at this, and there's a lot of combos that just want to like totally run your library completely dry. Like, I, is this a world gorger esque combo? Like, does this, uh, can this win? We're going to find it. I mean, it has the colors to, to do it. In a, yeah, you know? in, a, in, a, in the similar way, can it do it? Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. You know, with Kroxa and Kunaros, you're in Mardu, but, uh, you know, I just don't know if you have any, like, I win on this spot with, you know. Like, it just doesn't get you. It's not a more hurt. elegant way to do it. Yeah, like, it's yeah. not. It's, it's definitely more work, but it's kind of freaking cool. And, like, this talks to the whole, like, cycle of these cards that are, like these combined gold border cards of two characters we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's just what is, what makes me so excited about this set is like it's ramifications for multiple formats. Like this is, these are commander players are going to be chewing on this set for such a long time. And we're going to be seeing battles permeate and all these flip cards permeate and all these cool new legendaries start popping their heads up. 
uh, while we see, you know, things like this Gitaxian Spellstalker are just freaking running standard. Yeah, you guys know I love dinosaurs. You sure do. There's a new one. There's several new ones in this set. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of new ones. I mean, yeah, yeah the uh, not the Convoke guy, the Altasaur or whatever that mm-hmm. I was going to talk about. This they, one's new just today. There's, you're going to have a new lot today. of new dinosaurs this year, Evan. Yeah. Between this and Ixbot. It's actually pretty hot. Woo! Yeah. Freaking Merith is coming back. Uh, I got a two and two red Rampaging Raptor. It is a four four dinosaur with trample and haste. You can pay two and a red. Rampaging Raptor gets plus two plus O until end of turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target planeswalker that player controls or battle that player protects. Relevant wow. text towards battles. There we go. One of the few. Yeah, one of the few. And I think this uh one of the better ones. Yeah, there is uh Invasion of Tarkir, which is mono red. This is I think this replaces the Ka- or the Raiju, Thundering Raiju. If you're playing a more battle-focused thing, if you want to play into, um, uh, if you want to play into this Kenra Spellspear thing, I think this deck just takes that over in mid range is harder than the current Mono Red because the Spellspear will trigger its prowess off of casting battles. Right. So I think this keeps it nice and low to the ground. This is your top end. It's great and standard. I think it's going to be great and limited. And we just see this now beautiful, awesome, wonderful little boy raptor. Maybe it's, I don't know. What is it called? Uh, Rampaging Raptor. And then another spicy card I looked at, Rona, Herald of Invasion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is a a Demir commander for the ages. I love this card. It is one in a blue legendary human wizard. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap Rona Herald of Invasion. It has tap, draw a card, then discard a card, and pay five and a Phyrexian black mana. Transform Rona, activate only as a sorcery, and on the back is where it gets <laughs> insane. It's just crazy. It Holy is a, shit, I didn't read the back until yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is a 5-5 five, five trample that whenever a source deals damage to Rona Talarian Obliterator, that source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random. If it's a land card, you put it on the battlefield under your control. Otherwise, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. And the flavor text says, at last, I am complete. Seems like you want to be pinging the fuck out of this thing in your own deck. Like This seems like, to me, like play Prodigal Sorcerer. Not Prodigal Sorcerer because that's red, but the blue one. The Tim card. Oh, Tim. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just tap to deal damage. Now all of a sudden you just tap deal damage and you get to randomly cast a spell from your hand. Is Tim legendary or is it rule zero does legendary? No, he's not legendary. Not, not real Tim, but the, the the sorcerer, the blue wizard that taps deals one damage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, seems like that would be the best way to abuse it is just kind of cheating out cards out of your own hand. Mm-hmm. But there's the cap of it is random. Right. Um, I mean, just play good cards. Just play good cards, dude, and random doesn't even freaking matter. Um, there is a better, in my opinion. Okay, I will say, she looks scary as fuck, and I love her art on the backside. But I think there is a better Demir Commander in this set. And I think that is Hidetsugu and Kairi. K- K- Kairi? K-A-Y-R-I? K-A-I-R-I? K- Ky- I'm guessing it's Kairi. Well, here's the best part about it. It's the creature typing. It's an ogre demon dragon. Very oh. sick creature type. Very sick creature mm-hmm. type. It is two blue, blue, black, five total for a flying 5-4. I didn't even notice that flying. Makes yeah. sense because it's a dragon. It says, whenever it enters the battlefield, draw three cards and then put two cards back. That's going to be a brainstorm effect right there. Love it. The second ability is better. When it dies, exile the top card of your library. Target opponent loses life equal to its mana value. If it's an instant or sorcery, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. Wow. So that tell, having having a sack outlet tells me that, you know, you know, one top of deck tutor is it's essentially a free ad nauseum. Right. Free peer into the abyss. Yeah, I know you see the matrix in a different way for ad nauseum than I do. I've never used the card, never played the card. Mm-hmm. I've, I understand how it works. I don't know if I've seen you spend black mana. <laughs> like, <laughs> only, play, only playing Hepatra. Yeah. And in which case, it's still a Rube Goldberg machine. But uh, I would also like to note the fact that uh, it is upon the resolution of this ability that you get to cast that card. So if you kill it at instant speed, I believe it lets you cheat timing restrictions. Because when it dies, you exile the top card of your library, opponent loses life. If it's an instant sorcery, you cast it without paying its mana cost right there. It doesn't say you may cast it. Oh. 
Yeah. It does yeah, it does ignore timing. Oh yes, is it you may cast it without paying its mana cost, it does say that. Yeah. But it ignores the timing. Yeah, yeah? it does. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, peer into the best, you know, you get hit a little like vamp tutor top, boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I feel like you can do some really, really crazy shit with that. Yeah. Totally. I, I love that. Um and I'm excited to see what you build with it. We should get a list going so that For sure. Yeah. That's interesting that it's not Grixis because Hitetsugu has you know red yeah, totally could have been yeah yeah very right so yeah no that that for me makes it even more playable like it makes it more interesting at least as a Demir commander yeah you know? I I love me two colors especially when I'm building commander decks and there are so many good two color <laughs> legendaries in this set with all like the combinations we have like Rankle and Torbrand Brawl and Kari Zev like these all look super interesting to play. A very disappointing legendary in, in Dejiro and Hazaret should have been a patch uh, Also, just not my favorite build on that. Um, there is talk about a potential new uh, interactive spell for CDH in this set. Uh, it mm. is a new blue card. Mm. Uh, I just had it. It is called shit. It is not the right card. Does it, it change the equation? It has changed the equation for one in a blue. It is an instant. It says choose one. Counter target spell with mana value two or less, or counter target red or green spell with mana value six or less. It says good words. It says good words. I agree. Those are all words. Those words are good. It's a good card. I think it's pretty good. This is this is. Is it a good? Uh, can we agree that it's a good card? It is a good card. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if like Jordan brought it up the other day. You know off off record we were just talking about it and i just you know i really stretch my brain trying to find what slot it takes in the current a lot of these current builds i people will try people will try to make it work the only thing i i my mind gets drawn to is that it the fact that it just says counter target spell and it's just yes there are some restrictions with that but spell of any type with mana value two or less, that is, you know, a lot of relevant things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. ignore the two or less if it's red or green, essentially. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're yep. still hitting, that's hitting your dock sides. Like now all of a sudden you, your spell counter spell is hitting dock side. It's hitting breach. It's hitting, you know, any giant green stompy creature that typically the Grixis deck has a hard time handling. You know, mm-hmm. that's hitting like a. And it's not only red or green. Like it's, you know, as long as red or green is part of their color identity, that restriction Correct. goes off, right? Yep, exactly. So, yeah, so I, I think that makes it extra good, you know? Yeah. Incidentally, one of those colors is probably going to be in your commander. Green is pretty good in commander. That's exactly right. And like we've, you know? we've talked about how good Tails End is from time to time, but it still doesn't see a lot of play because it's a stifle effect plus the ability to counter commander. And like, I feel like most of us just agree that there's just not a room for stifle effects in commander in our commander decks. But now that we have a viable commander counter uh, stapled to an actually good counter spell on top of that. To me, that sounds like we're going to be seeing this in CDH. Yeah. I, I know in the last couple of years, we've seen a couple new introductions of counter spells that have sort of changed the way, like changed the slots up, right. Have given people more flexible options based on what they want to build. Like, uh, an offer you can't refuse being For one, sure. yeah, where it's just yeah. one blue mana counter target non-creature spell like that's great and that has more relevance now with battles but uh, this is one where I like I look at it and I am confused like I'm very confused because I just don't know how strong it is and it only time will tell you got to build the deck you got to play with it you got to get some reps in because once you play it and you have it in your hand you're going to see how relevant it is I mean a two mana counter spell has to be really good Yes, it does. Honestly, like mana drain is borderline not good enough. It's true, but it is so, also a double pip. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the, the upside here is that it's one uh, colorless and a blue pip. This counters Winota on the stack. It does counter Winota. Uh, it also, you know. Like, that's hot. Especially for like decks like what I like to play where we are intentionally, we are trying to win. So we play with interaction on the stack so that it always either protects. Stop someone from beating us if we need it, but it also is there to protect us for winning when we go for our win. Every time you have to take one of those out for a creature removal spell, you're making that deck slightly worse. Right. But now you have a spell that can counter the Winota on the stack if that's what you need to do, but it's also the spell that's going to, you know, maybe make sure you resolve the counter war because now it's just a two mana counter mana dream, counter, you know, spell, a swan song, spell pierce, whatever. I think it's uh, worth testing. It, sure. it definitely is yeah. worth testing. It might be come to the point where you know it's just a little too niche a little too narrow but i do think there's some some uh, possibility here 
Or I mean, delay is playable. It's it's yeah. It, yep. I think I feel like it fits that delay spot. It does. I I feel like delay is still ten percent better at least because yeah. it just hits anything regardless. Mm-hmm. And like the in CDH, that three turned clock is essentially might as well be gone forever. Ooh, one thing I forgot to say. This is like way way back to the first ten minutes of the podcast when we we're talking about battles. Nope, too late. <laughs> I totally forgot that the ruling on battles is that when you remove the last defense counter, it exiles itself and then you may cast it. It has that wording so that you ignore timing conditions, right? So if the last thing is taken off, you can cast the sorcery that's on the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to cast it from exile. So Draneth. Draneth. Oh, Draneth. Yeah. You know, so I, I was going to say Draineth wasn't good enough. I'm glad that finally. <laughs> yeah. you know, Dr. Yeah. Draineth magistrates, well, you can. It is a cast trigger. So, like, it is one of those things where Draineth can totally stifle battles. Um, so, go ahead and get your borderless foil Draineth while they're cheap. Just kidding. They're not fucking cheap. They're not cheap anymore, <laughs> bitch. Uh, one last battle I will hey. mention that was just spoiled today. What's up, dude? Oh, I was going to say, well, speaking of stacks pieces. Phyrexian sensor. Yo. Yes. Yeah, you've been you know, talking about it all week. Oh man. Uh two colorless, one white. You know, I th- it's a three three and God, it is a three three. It's a three three and non Phyrexian creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And let's be absolutely clear that what I just said with about the Draneth is relevant here. If you play your battle and you want to swing on it to transform it the turn you play it, you can't. Because this is going to stop you. Because you played one non-Phyrexian spell by playing the battle. And unless the backside is Phyrexian... Oh, yeah, I didn't mention that. Yeah, I was about to say... Yeah, yeah, You are fucked. There's a whole other line of text on that card. Yeah, it's an Ethersworn Canonist effect for Phyrexian typing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, So it's essentially, it's just going to be a deafening silence Mm -hmm. unless you're playing a ton of fucking Phyrexians. Yeah. I mean, there's some things that care about Praetors... Uh, in this set as well. True. Yeah. Totally. I when Mark Rosewater had released his like list of things and it said I sent you guys that image when it said you know like players cannot play one, more than one non Phyrexian spell. I was like, this looks like it's gonna be good. Yep. Uh, another. Uh, this is gonna be another window to staple for sure. Totally. For sure. Yeah. Totally. Any deck that plays Archon of Amaria wants several, or you know, Rule of Law. And, or any of that stuff wants several of the effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel and the more like, of them you can get them on creatures, the better. Because yep. those decks really Because like of the them. Winona trigger and all that exactly, stuff. Exactly. Like yeah. Eldritch Evolution and all that. Uh, the last battle I want to mention is Invasion of Pyrulea because it's an uncommon for a green and a blue that when it enters the battlefield, scry three and then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land or double faced card, draw a card. Pretty wow. good. Yeah. Has four defense counters and it transforms into the gargantuan slab horn. So four four trample with ward two. Other transformed permanents you control have trample and ward two. So it protects your battles after they flip. That's pretty hot. Wild. Yeah, and it protects all of your Phyrexian incubators too after Ooh, they flip. Very nice. So I think that's that, a limited bomb. That is a sure. bomb for Quite two bomb. mana that you can just like punch yeah punch that battle to death and get one of the strongest cards in limited i think um okay uh we are getting close to the end of the rope here we want we don't want to like drag this out too much but we do have a couple uh well the discussion on this could be long but we can keep it keep or keep it short i think what's up the praetors from the set yeah they're all pretty good they're all pretty good and they all should, have should that be a separate app we could. Yeah, because I was going to say, it's more than just that. There's uh, several creatures, including all the Praetors, that have like a huge creature on the front side, some kind of active Ayara ability. That's is exactly. to talk about, yeah. Yeah, so we have Ayara to talk yep. about. I think that could just be a whole set, a little, a little episode, yeah. a little Ooh, review. We could okay. honestly talk about, in that, on another topic, like half and half, we could talk about how transforming cards are changing the game. Yeah, we're seeing it more and more. Cards have a lot of text on them on both sides of them these days. Evan just mentioned one. Right, right. It's uh, uh, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Urabrask is finally given the respect that he deserves. Yes. Stay tuned next week for how much, unless you look online, in which case you can find that out right now. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Mock Stars podcast. A friendly reminder that if you'd love to, su- to support the show, you can find us on YouTube. You can hit the thumbs up, subscribe. That goes a long way. Comment. 
for the algorithm and hit that little bell f- to get notifications for when our next episode drops. Always releasing episodes on Fridays and you can find us on all podcast platforms and social media. There's so many cards I still want to talk about because this, I, this yeah. week was crazy. I'm we're not doing a set oh. review. We said we're not doing a set review. Go read all these cards. They're sick as fuck. I just don't know how you break it down. Like yeah. when I'm looking at these spoilers, I don't know how to take like how to chop it up to make sense of it. Like I'm going to open these packs and just be like. This is also one of the most wild sets we've seen in a while. You know, it's, it's yeah. pulling from like every different plane, every art style, everything, like every mechanic. It is going to be absolutely wild to try and build draft decks out of this too. Itali is the new best food chain commander. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, okay, I have to stop myself because I was about to bring up another card. We got to go. Ritter, have fun at the baseball game. Oh, I will. Thank you. Have fun doing whatever it is you guys are going to do. Play Pokemon, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Mock Stars podcast, y'all. Goodbye. Y'all. Bye. Bye.